Right, let's get started with making our scrubs top first. In your instructions that you've got with a pack, if you got one from me, it tells you exactly how to do this. So what I'm going to do is follow it in the order which I give you on that piece of paper. This means we're just going through a careful sequence. Looking at what I've got on my table at this precise moment, I've got a box of pins, always useful for holding together while you're sewing them. Only dropped them on the floor once today, so that's pretty good going. A pair of scissors for snipping little bits off. Um, I've got all the pattern pieces I'm going to need. I've got trying to keep them separate so I don't get too muddled. This is my sewing machine. I absolutely love it. It's got a few fancy stitches on it, but at the moment we're going to be using just the zigzag and the straight stitch. Uh, if your machine would do zigzag, that's fantastic. Um, you may have a thing called an overlock stitch on it. But when we come to overlock, this over here is my overlocker. Now I'm going to use my overlocker when we make the trousers and on some of the edges on this because it's simply much faster. If you haven't got an overlocker, it is not a problem at all. People who've had them really love them. However, they are another, another level of sewing really. Great if you're doing lots and lots of scrubs, um, but certainly not vital in this operation. Here I've got my zigzags and my straight stitches and that is all I need. I'm remembering that we've got a one stitch seam allowance so on your machine you can see uh, you've got one centimetre seam allowance, seam allowance so when I get that little line there where it says one that's roughly where the edge of the fabric is going to be where my needle goes in. I'm going to not have the smallest size I'm going to aim at about a 2.8 for me on this machine um, for my stitch length. Let's see how we go. First of all let's take our tunic top. We're going to need to have it the right way up, which is a good start. You can see there is the neck at the back. Double-sided fabric, doesn't matter which way round it is. But we mustn't get confused and start sewing things the wrong way out because it's not an obviously one side or the other. Um, you can get a bit muddled and end up sewing seams in two different directions. So here we have the front being sewn to the back at the shoulder seams. I'm going to pop a pin in just to hold that roughly in place. I'm trying at this stage to be careful not to end up putting them where I'm going to sew. Stitching over pins can damage your needle and your sewing machine. Um, occasionally it doesn't really matter. If you think there's a risk that you need to have more pins in it, pin them like this so that if the needle goes over them, they slide over and don't go too fast because most machines will slide over a thin needle like that. So, let's get going. We're going to place the foot here. We're going to line up the edge to one centimetre and we're going to do our best to try and make a nice steady line. At this point, I'm not going to go backwards and forwards over the start because I'm going to be putting a facing onto that bit, as you will see. My machine, as you will see just there, has a little scissors which cuts off the, fab the thread as we go. At this point, the easy way to do the finishing is to zigzag before you do anything else. It doesn't, this seam on the shoulder does not have to lie flat and that's turned outwards. Therefore, it's much easier to stitch a zigzag as you go. On here, I'm going to press my zigzag button, make them both a bit larger. And then I'm going to zigzag down here. Zigzagging prevents fraying. There we've got a one inch, one centimetre seam allowance and a zigzag seam that won't fray when it's washed. We're going to the other shoulder, we're going to pin it exactly the same way. We're going to start at the top because if there has been any miscalculation at the, on the seam length, it's much easier to adjust at the edge of the seam, at the edge of the uh, sleeve here than it is at the neckline. We want the neckline to be try and be as accurate as possible. Once again, just a couple of pins to hold it in place. This fabric doesn't move very much, so it's actually very easy to sew. And as you'll note, it's not uh, fraying as we sew it either. Some fabrics do fray terribly, but this particular one doesn't. Right, let's begin 
Let's begin by with our second thing. First of all, we must remember to go back to the straight stitch, which on my machine is the press of a button, and then I want to make the uh, size again, stitch length a little bit longer again. Uh, here we have a, a, the sewing machine foot here is the standard craft foot that comes with the machine. It's got room therefore within that to do the zigzag when you just switch it. Um, there are loads of different feet for sewing machines, all of which have got a different um, purpose. Uh, so just make sure that the foot you're using is accurate and purposeful for the activity you're doing because if you use the wrong foot it can lead to a lot of problems. Here's a basic craft foot, let's see how we go. Line up the one centimetre uh, mark with the edge of the fabric and let's slide down the other shoulder. You may notice that in some places it's not terribly uh, accurate. With these particular outfits, um, it, that's not particularly crucial. It, it's helpful if it is. If you use an overlocker, of course, it will stitch and cut at the same. Uh, it will stitch and cut at the same time, achieving a completely accurate edge. But on this particular garment, um, sort of the one mil that we've got there is not critical at all. So let's do our zigzags again. Our prevention of fraying. And cut. There we have two shoulders sewn together and we're ready to put on our facings.